Now, when you think about what you want to do in cold weather camping or how to keep yourself safe, think of the acronym COLD. It's real easy because you're cold. The C stands for keep yourself and your clothes clean. Avoid overheating. Wear clothes loose and in layers. That would be the L. And D is keep dry. That also includes both water. If you get snow on, you brush it off as soon as possible. And sweating. Because if you start sweating, wearing too many clothes, or being too warm, you will absolutely freeze. And it will be quick. Hypothermia will set in quickly, and hypothermia can set in at about 50 to 40 degrees if you're not careful. You gotta be very careful about that. When we go camping, we keep an eye on each other and watch out for each other. Always remember one major thing. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Let's say that you uh, don't feel thirsty. Should you drink water? Yes. No, don't eat snow. <laughs> eating, eating snow is horrible because it will cause your stomach to cramp up because it's so cold. You do not want to drink cold, liquid that's cold. Also, when you put your water bottle in your, bottle, in your backpack, turn it upside down. Who can tell me why? It prevents it from freezing. No, well, it doesn't prevent it from freezing. The water freezes from the top to the bottom. So, so if, if you turn it over to drink out of it, you're on the liquid side, not the ice side, and you can get the cap off. If you leave it in your backpack straight up and down, it's way too frozen and might have trouble getting the top off. Oh, always now. Always oh, analogy. Carrie, uh, if you have a small, um, it's like a thermos, fill it with uh, something hot. It could be tea, it could be hot chocolate, coffee, whatever you want. Like one of those Yeah, but it'll, you want to make oh, sure you right. still. Plastic. Yeah, the plaid, plaid, that, that kind of plastic. Is bad. The Nalgene is nice and thick, so it'll help you. Yes? I have a thermos that has a food guy, so it's a hot chocolate. Thermos that's not for food. I mean, that's for food. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like I said, you wear socks, wicking t shirt. Now, these socks, I got these at BJ's the other day. These are thermal socks. I'm wearing one pair. You got to feel the inside of these things. I mean, they're, they're, they're like, well, <laughs> they're like flannel jammers inside these things. They keep at BJ's. They're, they're like, like the greatest socks. That reminds me of I've socks. had those before. Reminds me of the wool socks that I got for some Wool socks, merino wool socks are really good. Um, always remember, cover yourself up. You wear a scarf. You wear a stocking hat. She's uh, demonstrating for me, the two young ladies are demonstrating for me. Um, if you need to, pull it down over your ears, like that. Reason being is you need to keep your ears, because the tips of your e ears will get frostbite faster than anything else. The um, your toes will get frostbite fast too. They do make toe warmers that are just little yeah. things that stick to your socks. And then you can also put the uh, hot hands in your shoes. So. Well, no, that, they're, they're too big. The thin toe warmers fit perfectly. They, they stick to your socks. They don't slide around. Wasn't there like a small hot hand? Yeah, but it's, it's still going to be annoying. You're still going to step on it. That's true. Um, if, you, if it's really cold and windy, wear a ski mask. Now, sleeping. Sleeping is always fun to do when you're warm. Yes. Don't sleep in a hammock. 
<laughs> oh no, that's that's fine. Yes. Everybody says don't sleep on a cot. I mean, I sleep on a cot when it's cold. You guys are the reason adults. is I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You guys are dumpy adults. Hmm? You guys are dumpy. Oh, we adults. we kicked them out. They they don't know what they're doing. Okay. They're they're, they're just chit chatting. So yeah. when when you sleep in a hammock or in, in a cot. The main thing you want to do is make sure you are protected underneath. They make this material, it's silver. Have you ever seen those silver things they put in windshields? Yeah. Yeah. That's called Reflectix material. You can buy that at like Lowe's or Home Depot or... Well, no, I mean, like you might roll it. What you want to do is like unroll that and stick it on, on your cot or you put it underneath you in your hammock. And then on top of that, you put... On top of your cot, you put your, well, uh, what I like to do is put my sleeping pad underneath it and then put the reflective material on top. And then I use those straps to hold it in place. And then I put my second sleeping bag, which is oversized. I lay that down on top of it. And then I put my sleeping bag I want to sleep in. Inside the sleeping bag, I have a fleece blanket that I use. And I roll up and I flip that second sleeping bag over the top of me. And minus 14, I actually got too warm. Oh, it, it's a, it all fits in one bin. A bin? A bin. A bin. A like a footlock? You lost it the first time you said sleeping bag. Huh? You lost me the first time you said sleeping bag. Why? You don't know, use sleeping bags? You just. I, just, I heard sleeping bag, and 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 I heard sleeping bag. Yeah, well, there's only two sleeping bags. I use one as a quilt, and then I slide in into one of them, and I get like, comfortable. And inside of there, I have a flannel blanket. And at minus 14, the inside of my bag is about 96 degrees. So you lose the fleece or uh, flannel. That's usually what I do. I'll take it, I'll pull it up around my shoulders because it blocks the air from getting into the bag to pull air. You had your hand up for a long time. I usually, when I bring a tent, and I usually have a sleeping bag and a thermal blanket if I have a sleeping bag, will that be fun? Yeah, that's okay. good. Uh, what about a blow up mattress? Um, like inside the tent? A blow up mattress, like, the, like, like a twin mattress kind of thing? If you sleep on one of those, it's going to be like sleeping on my skin. Yeah. You want something with thermal protection, like a uh, like an REI sleeping pad or something like that. Um, I highly recommend getting a. Uh, uh, you can go on Amazon and buy a sleeping pad. As long as it's got an R value greater than four, it'll be it'll be good. The higher the number, the better. I have uh, one that's an R four and one that's an R six. And the R6 is the one that fits perfectly on my cot. The R4, I'm getting rid of. I'll take it. Nah, you already gave it away. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, then inside your tent, make sure you have ventilation. Because as you exhale, the inside of your tent will condensate your, your breath over the inside and when you wake up, there will be ice all over the inside of your oh, tent. Yeah. And then do not crack it. No. Don't go, oh, this is cool. No, that's not cool. No. Because you'll crack right through the nylon and break your tent. Yeah, not fun. And uh, second thing you don't want to do is if snow is on your tent, if it snows on you that night and, and the snow covers your tent completely, which is awesome, because if it's 14 degrees below zero outside, the coldest it can be inside your tent is 32, above zero. So at, the reason at, Eskimo, I thought Eskimo was big, 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 big. Yeah, so at 14 <laughs> below zero, I had snow completely covering my tent. And I was stupid. I rolled over and I rolled the wrong way and I hit the side of the tent and all that snow went uh -huh. And it went from 46 degrees in my tent to minus 10 oh, in about gosh. three minutes. That's terrible. It just—it was just—it was not—it was not fun. 
I had to get dressed really fast. Also, when, when you wake up in the morning, keep your clothes near you. Pull them into the sleeping bag about 15 minutes before you get up. That way you can warm your clothes up and you're not putting on cold clothes. Why not just put them in to your sleeping bag? You, you, can, you can do that too. I usually put them in the back. Yeah, I, I put mine up like at my feet because my sleeping bag is really at the side of my feet. Mm -hmm. Which is not fun. So. There you go. And um, small blanket, stuff it around your shoulders to stop the airflow. Should you sleep completely covered in your sleeping bag? No. Why not? Because you're going to suffocate. Nah, you won't suffocate. But as you exhale, the, the moisture from your breath will go into your sleeping bag, which will make the inside of your bag wet, which makes you wet, which makes you colder. That's the reason you don't do it. I never understood how people sleep like in the full mummy, like with it over their head. Oh, I always feel like I'm going to like, turn. I will it. take a, put everything in. I'll, I'll put the cinch straps down. I'll, str I'll cinch it around my shoulders, and then I'll put the mummy bag up and I'll cover up everything for here. And then if I really want to, I I take a blanket and throw it over my face. It's almost like I'm in a body bag. <laughs> Sad analogy. <laughs> it's hilarious sometimes. Um, what about bringing a bottle of hot water into your sleeping bag with you? Is that a good no, idea? No moisture. If it's a good Nalgene bottle that seals well, it's great. If it's Mark's bottle like that, no, it's not great. You do not want to do that. Um, what if it's one of those, do you remember those old-fashioned rubber things, the hot water bottle things. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. If you roll over on top of that and pop that cork out, what's going to happen? <laughs> it's kind of like a bladder. Just like just like when you're drinking water, you do not want to have a bladder in your backpack. Because it'll freeze solid and there is no way to warm it up. Just like when you, before you go to bed, fill your pot with water and put it on the stove with the lid. What will happen during the night? Okay, water freezes. What happens when you turn the heat out underneath it? It melts. Now, let's say you have bottles like that to fill your water up, those freeze. Now you've got to like cut the plastic around it and put that ice cube into a pot to thaw it out. So you want to make sure that you have water ready to go in the morning. That's why you want to put it in the container on the stove with a lid on it. Two reasons for the lid. One, you don't want things to fall into it like spiders, ants, gnats. And the second reason why you want a lid on it because when you start cooking it, you start heating it up, the lid will actually help it to heat up faster. Just remember that if you, if you try to sleep in a wet sleeping bag or wet clothes, always change your clothes before you go to bed. Sleep in pajamas, sleep in a running suit, sleep in fleece pants and a fleece shirt, sleep something like that. Do not sleep in your clothes. That is the best way to get cold during the night. Before you go to bed, drink some water. It'll raise your metabolism. Eat a protein bar, or if you uh, if you like them, like you know the Slim Jims, the meat sticks. Okay. Eat eat those things. We have those before you go to bed. Yeah. Before you They're, go to bed. Before you go to bed, because the protein, the, the meat and the protein bars will cause your body to try to burn that faster, which will actually warm you up. So drink eat a candy bar. It sounds like a great thing. Oh, that'll warm me right up. Mm. It warms you up for like three minutes and then you go and you go downhill and you get colder. Uh, if the temperature is supposed to be around 30 degrees, dress and prepare like it's going to be zero. If it's going to be zero, prepare and dress like it's going to be minus 20. Always put clothes on before you get cold and take clothes off before you get too warm. 
So you have your layers, you got your big coat, you got your other coat, you got your sweatshirt, you got this, you got that. You dress in layers. Same with, same with your legs. You got your pants, you got a pair of uh, thermal pants underneath that. Um, yeah, for the boot camp out, I wore like um, two pairs of yoga pants, um, leggings, and then jeans because it was so cold. Boot camp out was, it was, it was fun, but it was a feeding thing. When you sleep, you want to make sure that you wear a pair of socks. Okay. When I woke up, and those I socks came through my pair of socks. Yeah. You, you keep whatever you're going to sleep in. Whatever you're going to sleep in, that's the only thing you do. That's all you use it for. It goes with your sleeping bag. When, when you get up in the morning, you take all that stuff off, put on the clothes you're going to wear during the day. That way, when you come back for in the evening, you take all the old the clothes off you wore during the day and you put on the clothes you're going to sleep in. You already know it's clean and it's dry. And it'll keep you warm. Those socks will keep you warm when you're sleeping. Those, uh, I got a pair of uh, fleece jogging pants and a, uh, a thermal shirt that I wear. What about the thermal pads? Thermal pads? Like normal pads Sure. Oh, you're talking about that's like lots of money, but they're not not a great. They don't help a lot. Okay. If you put one right in the center of your chest, if you're freezing cold, it'll help warm you up a little bit, but it won't do a lot. You'll need to put like probably two or three of them on you, and those things are way expensive for that. I have a bunch of my I have a bunch of my rooms without you. Okay, my clothes for cold weather. Wool retains its insulation properties even when it's wet. So if you have actual wool, like merino wool, and it gets wet, it will still keep you warm. Um, there's some good man-made fibers. Some of them are lightweight. Rain here is waterproof, but that means it's also windproof. So if it's cold and rainy, even if it's just cold and windy, if you put your rain jacket on over the top of everything, it automatically jacks up your inside temperature. It keeps things a lot warmer because the wind is not going through you anymore. Uh, waterproof your shoes. Do not wear ever wear Crocs camping, especially during the winter. Or sandals. Or sandals. You should always wear complete shoes. Uh, I have two pairs of camping shoes, a summer pair and a winter pair. These are the winter pair. These are waterproof. And the other pair are not. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I stepped in a puddle about oh, no. an hour after I bought them. And I was like, oh, that's what a wet sock feels like. You've never had a wet sock? Not like, not like that. Oh, dude, it was, it was like I, I was not wearing a shoe. It was that wet. I've had that multiple times. Uh, rubber boots. I like that. Uh, wear a pair of cotton socks underneath to help wick the uh, moisture away. Right. If it's snowing or you're walking through goop, uh, pull the trouser legs over the top of your shoes to keep junk out, like snow. Wear mittens instead of fingered gloves. They allow your fingers to keep each other warm. And fingers are friendly. They like each other. Yeah. Wear a stocking cap that covers your ears. And also remember to cover your neck area. Heat loss happens through exposed skin. About 10% is through your head. So wearing a warm headgear is a must. A uh, scarf also reduces heat loss around your neck. Make, don't just wrap it. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way that you can fold it so it actually covers just like this. And what you do is you fold it in half and pull it through itself, and then it pulls up. Uh, papers are good insulators, so if you get really cold, you can actually grab a bunch of newspaper and stuff, stuff it inside your coat, like inside your shirt, and it'll actually keep you warm. Uh, Mummy style bags are warmer than rectangular bags, but with a, with a rectangular bag, if you bring an extra blanket, put it around your shoulders, you'll be fine. Don't sleep with your head under covers, it increases the humidity in the bag. Remember to air out your sleeping bag and tent when the weather permits. 
leave your sleeping bag unzipped and open during the day, and it'll, you'll, even though you'll say, but it'll get cold inside, it'll get cold inside anyway. Um, wear a stocking cap to bed. You're already starting, good. Um, wear a stocking cap to bed because it'll help your heat loss. Wear a sweatshirt, something to sleep in. Uh, loose, uh, when you want to uh, loose fitting bag, make a loose fitting bag from an old blanket or carpet pad to put your feet into if they get too cold. So what you can do is actually make a little cubby to the bottom of your sleeping bag for your feet out of a blanket. You can double it over so it to the sides, slip your feet inside of it, and your feet will actually have a nice warm blanket all by themselves. Um, they also make these things called sleeping bag liners. Sleeping bag liners, they also refer to them as uh, 50 degrees, 60 degrees sleeping bags. All they do is they protect you from sweating in your sleeping bag. Now you do need to wash your sleeping bag about once a year. And the best way to wash it is take it to a dry cleaner and have them wash it. Oh yeah, it's been a couple of years since I washed mine. Um, don't leave them rolled up in your in your garage. Is, oh. is yours rolled up in the garage? In the in the little bag that it came in. Yeah, see that's bad because if you do that, it it's, it's squishing it. You want to open it up and lay it out flat for a couple of weeks. I have a bag that I put. I have a I have a very large bag that mine fits in, and I put them in the bin. I have like a laundry. That's, that's it. Mine's in the bag that it, come, that it came in on a, in my closet. Yeah, that's, you want to take it out of that bag because it'll, it'll compress it. And, and it'll, it'll be a whole lot less warm. So if it's a 30 degree bag, think of it as a 45 degree bag. Yeah, pretty much destroyed. You want to put a ground cloth under your tent to protect you from moisture coming up from the ground? It's like putting water on the ground. So, space blankets. Oh, great insulators. Great insulation around your body, terrible insulation uh, underneath your tent. Because they will transfer the cold directly to the bottom of your tent for you. Um, great blankets. Cold air will be above yeah, and below you. Put a hand warmer in your by your feet to keep your feet warm. Um, let's see. Exercise before going to bed. Remove the clothes you're wearing before bedding down if they are damp with perspiration. Build a windbreak outside your tent if it's snowing. You can pile snow up to keep the wind from blowing through your tent. Oh, here's, here's for you, number 18. Never store your sleeping bag compressed. Number 18. Instead, hang it up, lay it out, or use a huge stuff bag. Um, Was that what you're that was just your number 15. If at night you get cold, you should let somebody know. <laughs> We're trying to warn you. Can I continue? Yeah. Thanks. Um, if at night you get cold, and I mean cold, 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 you let somebody know. Your SPL is the perfect person to wake up. She would love it if you woke her up and told her you were cold. Wouldn't you? I wrote your book, so... Oh, you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying not register, though? Yeah. So, if, uh, if you need to wake somebody up, wake up any of the adults or the SPL. The SPL will help you. Um, no, the SPL will just... The SPL will roll over to ignore you. Um, Chills during the day, you want to make sure you drink at least two quarts of water. Even though you won't feel thirsty, your body will get dehydrated just as fast as during the summer. Learn to recognize uh, symptoms of cold weather. For example, there's frostbite, hypothermia, dehydration, trench foot, snow blindness. And for those people who feel that they need to put their stove with, inside their tent to keep it warm, carbon monoxide poisoning. Oh, definitely. Oh, yes. 
I have, I know about this due to other people. Why? Um, they wanted to keep their tent warm, so they brought their stove inside, and they did not survive. Use the buddy system to check each other for well weather health problems. If you feel cold during the day, go gather some firewood. You don't have to start a fire, but just doing something, keeping moving will help warm you up. Eating ice or snow is a bad idea. It'll lower your body temperature and it'll give you stomach issues. No open flames or lumps of coal inside of tents. It displaces or consumes oxygen and is a fire hazard. Wiggling your toes and your boots will help keep your feet warm. Wear sunglasses if it's snowing because of the glare off the snow will give you snow blindness, which can really trigger migraines real quick, even if you've never had one. My mom has migraines. You can get there's a, you can get ocular migraines from yeah. them too. And those are crazy. My mom has ocular migraines. I got one once. It was freaky. She's had like five. Use hand warmers. They're cheap. Use toe warmers. They're just as cheap. Keep off streams, lakes, and ponds, even if they appear frozen, because you don't know how thick that ice is, and you may end up being underwater. And if you're underwater, guess what? You could end up being under the ice. And if you can't break through that ice, guess what? You, do. you got a problem. You do. A little bit more than a problem. <laughs> Just also remember it takes longer to cook food when it's cold. Keep matches in a metal match safe as plastic things can freeze during the uh, during really cold weather, so your matchbox thing can freeze, and when you go to open it, it just falls apart. I've seen that. So lighters. They have plastic lighters, same way. Keep them, if you have a plastic lighter, keep them inside of a jacket pocket, inside, or in your pocket. And not a metal. No, I don't know. If you uh, leave the metal, actually, the butane that is in those, will actually get a liquefying stain on the bottom. You won't get any gas coming out to ignite it. So. Oh, that's a, you're right, another thing. Um, those stoves, the isobutane stoves everybody likes, mm -hmm. during the uh, cold weather like that, with the highest flame you can get off that thing is just under what you can get from a candle. Because the gas inside the stove freezes and, and turns into a liquid, and you barely get any gas coming out of the stove, and it looks like a candle. I use a uh, wood stove, a wood gas stove, basically. Don't have any issues. Also, the other one you won't have any issues with is the old school white gas stove because you pump those up individually when you go to cook, so you've always got some good pressure for it. If you get really cold during the day, you can wrap a space blanket around your body, around whatever you're wearing, and then put your coat out over the top of it. It'll actually keep you warmer, but don't leave it there very long because you will start sweating and then you get cold again and you get colder the second time. Carry extra plastic trash bags. In cold weather, they can be used as personal windshields and ponchos. You can put it over top of your head, cut a hole in the top, put it through, and it's like a windbreaker. Carry extra matches because the more you need a fire to warm up, the less likely you are to start one. Flashlight batteries are also effective when it's cold, but you can revive the batteries by keeping them warm. Um, you can take your propane bottles, the green ones, into your tent because it'll be a little warmer in your tent than it is outside. And you can also, just before you get out of your sleeping bag, Pull that bottle into your sleeping bag to warm it up, and then you'll at least have a little while you can use uh, before you the bottle gets too cold and starts minimizing. Heaters in your tent can be deadly. And we got a layered clothing system. All sleeping. We've already talked about all this. Uh, what what do you wear? You wear multiple layers of clothes. I have a whole group of things that you can do, upper body, lower body, feet, head, hands. Um, the BSA actually states that cold weather camping is any camping less than 50 degrees. That's the BSA's official. 
because at 50 degrees you will experience, you can experience hypothermia. 50 to 14 degrees is the most dangerous. This wide temperature variations from melting snow during the day or ice to freezing at night make dressing difficult and it's essential to dress properly. In addition to damp conditions from melting snow or rain make keeping dry very difficult at those temperatures. From 14 to minus 20, the ground is frozen. Snow is dry and crystallized. Strong winds cause the most concern with keeping warm. Therefore, extra clothing layers and windproof outer garments should be added. And then there's my favorite camping, Arctic cold, below minus 20. This requires the most install insulation and windproofing. Many materials change physical properties and become brittle only for the most experienced campers. I experienced minus 40 one time. I had a boiling hot cup of coffee. I walked outside, threw it up in the air, and came down to snow. That's how cold it was. Now, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit is how much in Celsius? Does anybody know? No. Don't guess. What is it? Minus 40 Fahrenheit is? Zero Celsius is 30 Fahrenheit. It's the only place where the two scales are exactly the same. So minus 40 Fahrenheit is minus 40 Celsius. It's the only place where they're together. Medical emergencies, hypothermia. What is hypothermia? That's when your body gets too cold and your internal body temperature starts dropping. It gets very bad if you get below 90 degrees. Shivering, slurred speech, unable to communicate, lethargic. You know what lethargic is? Means you start acting tired. You want to you just want to sit and go to sleep. Stay warm, stay dry, stay hydrated, eat well. Put on dry clothes, eat warm foods and liquids. Uh, if you get too cold, go in your sleeping bag. Just go in your sleep. Just say, I'm going to go in my sleeping bag, I'm freezing. I had done it. I got chilled to the bone one day camping. I just said, I'm, I'll be gone for an hour, I'll be back. I went in my sleeping bag, grabbed my phone and watched something on Netflix, and I felt better, and I got up, and I was fine the rest of the day. Temperature was only zero. <laughs> It was warm. By the way, if, if you live at minus 50 or minus 60 degrees for weeks at a time, when the temperature warms to zero, you want to go out and shorts on a t-shirt because you feel like it's hot. I feel sorry for those people. Uh, carry a vacuum bottle with some kind of hot drink or soup. Now, you can also make like chicken broth or vegetable broth. Or, don't make beef broth. Chicken broth tastes, tastes better. Good soup. Uh, you can also make hot chocolate, coffee, or tea, and put that in a vacuum bottle, a thermos, and carry that in your backpack. And during the day, if you need something to, to drink that's warm, take it out and have a sip. Frostbite. An area gets numb, loss of sensitivity to touch, tingling that feels like burning, and it really does. Shivering, skin appears red, and then white, and then purple. That's bad. Um, what's, what's worse than shivering is when the person stops the shivering. Yeah. Because that's when you're to the point that you are severe hypothermia. And if you don't get that person warm quick, they may not make it. Your body basically gives up on your body gives up. That's exactly what it is. Because your shivering is trying to get more blood to your body. If your fingers or toes get frostbite, did you put them in warm water? No. What do you put them in? Cold water. Uh, cold water. The, re the reason why you want to put them in cold water, you put frostbite fingers in cold water, slowly. it's going to feel like you put it in boiling water. That person's going to scream. You want to warm it up slowly. You want to warm them up slowly. So you put them on, you put them in a, put their hand in cold water on the, on the stove and start warming scream. it up. Right? They're probably still going to scream. Oh, yeah. Um, use warm water about 99 degrees. 
which is just above normal body temperature. But if they have frostbite, it's going to feel like it's, it's 160. Dehydration. Symptoms of dehydration. Now, this is summer or winter. Increased heart rate, dry mouth, dizzy, muscle cramps, confusion, weakness. Those aren't good things. What about finding water? Most of the camps we go to have a water spigot. So if you got that water spigot, you're good, right? No, it's frozen. Yeah. <laughs> that metal spigot will freeze that water inside of it. What you want to make sure you do is crack the water before you go to bed so it's constantly flowing during the night, just dripping. As long as there's water coming out of the faucet, it won't freeze solid. And then in the morning, open that bad boy all the way up and let it flow. It'll clear all the ice out of there. Because the water under, underneath the ground is about 56 degrees, so it'll actually warm the pipes back up. Melting snow is a great option for water. Once you melt it in a pot, and cause it to boil for a couple of minutes. Yeah. You do not want to just eat melting snow. You can also use a portable UV light. Full of chemicals. You can put like, for a gallon of water, you can put like a drop of bleach in there and let it sit for a little while and it'll actually help it. Um, I have a little picture over here. How to sleep warm. Go to bed warm, fuel up, Drink water, wear proper clothing, hot water bottles, like a Nalgene bottle with hot water in it. Not boiling water, but hot water. Not one of those bottles, Mark. <laughs> um, you want to make sure you put, oh, then you can put it in there and you could actually snuggle with it during the night. It's really nice and warm. I've done it before. Uh, wear a hat. Keep your nose and mouth outside your sleeping bag. Keep off the ground, so sleep on a sleeping pad, sleep on a quilt, something. Wear socks specifically for your sleeping bag. Don't wear the same socks you wore during the day. And remember, always shake your bag before you get into it. That rearranges the piling inside, and it actually makes it fluffier. Any questions?